see if I can get this mirror image. Hmm. If I do it that way, then I can't see anything. That's okay, nobody's live right now anyway. Hey. I don't know why I bothered to do this. None of this stuff can be read because we're on YouTube and I don't know how to mirror the image. I don't know that it'll let me. Uh, filters, view. I don't see anywhere where it'll let me. That's, a, that's rather frustrating. Makes it difficult to do this live. Hey, there's a bunch of people showing up. Well, <laughs> talk about dandelions but if we can't get this thing to, to mirror the image I mean I suppose I could do the video and not nobody see me but I'd have to turn the camera around in order for me to be able to see the questions so uh, that's rather frustrating because I only have one device to be able to do this on unfortunately I'm not sure where my other phone is so I have one device to do this on do we really need to see me Take a quick, quick vote. There's eight of you. Vote quickly, <laughs> so we don't lose a bunch of people. Oh my gosh, dude! Shh. My dog. My dog is whining at the door because he wants to come in. Real quick. Do we need to see me? All right. So if you can hear me, that's fine. Nobody really needs to see my face. Let's twist this thing around. And voila, we can read it. The problem is I can't see the live, so I can't answer any questions or anything like that unless I'm behind the camera. So here we go. Be patient with me. Still trying to figure all this out. Eventually at some point we'll be in a better type of setup, so this is a lot more easy and convenient for everybody. Alright, so we're gonna talk about dandelions tonight. I don't know. We we did a poll earlier. And I'm not sure exactly where we're at with the poll. Um, but I was asking dandelion versus mayapple, which one sounded better. And the last time I looked, it was like 50-50. So I just went with dandelion because I didn't have too much time to wait any longer for that, that kind of stuff. So um, we're going to talk about dandelions tonight. And, and it's more than just, it's more than just a, a weed in your plant. You know, it's more than just something that, that the settlers brought over with them. Because they're not native here to the United States. They're, they're actually quite quite a powerful medicine. They're a good food source. They're really loaded with lots of nutrients. And there's a lot of medicinal properties. Now, as of late, they've been doing a lot more research and studies on, on dandelions and their benefits. And more people are becoming aware. But I, I hear more often than not that I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that about dandelions. So let's, let's go ahead and talk about some of this stuff. If you're missing it, this live is going to be recorded, and you can go back and look at it again later. After we're done with the live, I'm going to go ahead and um, do the rest of the description and everything so people can see it. So for those of you who are just now joining, I appreciate it. Um, if you don't have any dandelion, if you have a question and it's not dandelion related, either contact me direct or get a hold of Sarah there, and Sarah will give you um, other ways that you can get a hold of me. And that way we can we can continue on with what we're doing here because I don't want to lose track and I don't I'm not going to get off to off topic. So if you if you've heard something about dandelion that I don't mention as we're going, feel free to bring that up. But if it's not dandelion related, I, I just don't have time tonight to, to answer that. So, oh man, it made me think of men in black. <laughs> All right. So what do you know about dandelions? Anybody know anything about dandelions other than? It was 60% dandelion votes. Well, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Thank you, Teresa. I'm glad I guessed right. So I guess the poll turned out 60% uh, to dandelion. So yay. I guessed right. 
Okay, so I can tell you that they're not native to the United States. We already talked, we talked about that. They're native to Eurasia. And, and they find some of them in Europe, some of them in Asia, and they're, they're really in between the two where the, where the continents blend. Um, now, the funny thing is they've, they've discovered that you have herbs like wild lettuce, which were primarily in Europe. And then you have other herbs like hawksbeard and um, some, of these, some of those other from the Traxcom family that are on the other side that are in Asia. And then somewhere in the middle, I mean, they're all kind of interchangeable. So somewhere in the middle, you ended up with the dandelion. And, and the dandelion, as you can tell, is pretty prolific, right? They're everywhere. They're hard to get rid of, which is a good thing. Um, they're difficult to get rid of, but they're, they're really vilified. Now, some of the key things about dandelion, before I get into the sunscreen part of it, or before I get into some of the other benefits, um, if you have dandelions in your yard, they're actually beneficial. And I'll tell you why. Dandelions... Chicory, burdock, comfrey, any of those roots that get into your yard and grow really deep down. You know, a lot of people try to kill it. Well, grass grass roots don't go very deep, right? Your grass roots are going to go, I don't know, two or three, two or three inches, right? And and you get too much water, or too much erosion, or whatever, and you, you could potentially lose your grass. Um, but they don't, you know, they they take all the the grass will take all the nutrients off the top layers of the soil. Right, so it's sucking up all the nutrients. Well, you have to fertilize your yard, and you know, and then you got to spray the chemicals to get rid of the weeds. I hate that term. Get rid of the weeds, um, and that makes it, you know, I mean, really counterintuitive, right? Because now you have to add chemicals to your yard for the fertilizer. You have to add chemicals to your yard to get rid of the weeds, and and all in all, you have this very unnatural, unhealthy green thing in your yard and in your front of your house. It doesn't really serve any practical purpose other than appearance. It looks good, right? It looks good, but none of them weeds in it. Well, things like dandelion and burdock and, and some of those other er, other herbs that grow, their roots go down deep. They get down deep into the ground, and what they'll do is they'll pull the nutrients up from the lower layers of the ground. So six, eight, ten inches down, they're pulling the nutrients and the minerals, which is where a lot of those those nutrients are. And, and they'll spread their, their roots out further and they'll suck those nutrients up and, and, and the surrounding soil will be more nutritious. If you go out and look at your, your yard, if you have dandelions in your yard or any of those deep root herbs, look at the grass around them. And you'll notice that the grass around those herbs are typically healthier. They're, they're in much better shape. They're in much better condition. And, and it certainly looks like that particular part of the ground is is good right and then you go and spray your chemical on it and then you know and you got that big brown spot after the quote-unquote weed dies and then you have to go back to using fertilizer so <laughs> um seems very counterproductive so just so you know if you have rooty herbs in your yard they are really beneficial for helping to pull more more so more of the, the minerals and stuff you need up from the ground all right so let's go to the next page there's different benefits to dandelion now, a lot of people don't realize, but the entire plant is edible. The whole thing. You can eat the whole thing. All of it. And it, it even the flower. I, I don't like the flower, personally. I, I don't like the texture of it. You know, the, the flavors, it's all right, I suppose. But I'd, I'd rather not eat it, even in a salad. All right, I'm good. Um, I could drink it in tea, but I, I just don't like the flower. Uh, the leaves are good. I'll eat those in a salad. I'll, you know, I'll put them in a sandwich. You know, I, I don't cook them and, and make them into spinach, but you can do it that way, too. Um... The root is edible, you know, it, it is very nutritious. The entire plant has lactocarium. Now, if you if you dig up a whole dandelion, if you go outside, you dig up a whole dandelion, no matter where you break that dandelion up, if you look at where the break is, you're going to see the white sap that's, that leaks out. Well, that white sap is called lactocarium. Lactocarium, it, now, it, it does have like a rubber base, so if, if you're a latex type base, so if you, if you have a latex allergy, um... You really want to stay away from things like dandelion, chicory. You, you even want to avoid lettuce in general. If, if you have any type of um, allergy like that, you want to avoid lettuce. Because even, even regular head lettuce, right, iceberg lettuce, it has like the carrier in it too. That's that bitter flavor that you see. So uh, the other parts about dandelion is it's really high in vitamins. It has some of the highest content of vitamins in your yard, of the plants in your yard. Now it has vitamins A, C, and some of the B-complex vitamins. It's also high in vitamin K, which is really important for like blood clotting. So if you're on um, if you're on any type of blood thinners, warfarin, something like that, you probably want to check with your doctor before you start eating a lot of dandelion, right? Right? Because you don't want to affect your you don't want to affect your the way your blood clots. Um, dandelion also has a diuretic effect. It'll help flush out 
your body, right? You take it and it'll, it'll, it'll flush a lot of excess fluid out of your body, but it doesn't deplete the, the main minerals that you need, right? So it'll, it'll actually add minerals to your body, but it'll flush the toxins and, and other stuff, the excess fluids in your body that you don't need. Um, it, it's been shown to help protect liver function. So it'll boost your liver the way your liver works and it'll protect it. So it, it's what's called hepatoprotective. And by being hepatoprotective, by, by protecting the liver, it, it removes antioxidants or oxidants from the body. Now, for those of you who don't know, I call oxidants body rust, right? These are, these are compounds, high fructose corn syrup, um, toxins from the air, the foods that we eat, processed foods, things like that. They will, they will ultimately lead to building up junk in our body, right? And then you get free radicals that come from you know, outside in the environment, the sun, whatnot. Dandelion will help remove all of that, right? It'll help boost your, your liver function, but it, it'll remove some of the, the heavier stuff that makes it harder for the liver to function properly. Now, it also boosts kidney function. So it, it'll make, you know, make the kidneys a little bit more efficient. They've, they've used dandelion leaf for uh, kidney stones, right? So it, it's good to help get rid of kidney stones. I mean, don't get me wrong. Don't not go to a doctor, right? You have to go to your doctor and check. But these, these are some of the things that, you know, if, if, you're, if you're having issues, right, they, they've been used. Um, it also aids your gallbladder and your spleen. Now, your gallbladder is responsible for producing the bile in your body. So if you don't have enough bile produced, you're not going to digest your, pro your, your food properly. So if you're not digesting your food properly, well, you know, you're, you're not really getting that much benefit from your food. And, and your spleen just acts like another, another type of filter. It works in conjunction with your kidney and your livers, kidneys and your liver um, to keep that whole, that whole process functioning properly. Don't forget. Oh yeah, don't forget to hit the like button, y'all. I should probably do that too. Oh, I can't. <laughs> the board is blurry. I don't know if I can clean it up. This is really the best I can do. I, I don't really have a very fancy setup. I don't even. I shouldn't be. I think it's probably just the way the reflection hits. If I get a little closer, does that help a little bit? Probably helps if I don't shake it too. But I'm out in the store. Is that easier to see? I think some of it has to do with the lighting, but I can't do anything about that either. <laughs> so. All right. I've already done that. No, I think it's I think it's just the way the, the screen is. That's the best I can do. So it'll have to do for what we have until I can get a better setup. Part of it is the lighting. I have sun I have sunlight coming in. I don't have any real way to block it out. So um there. If I block out too much and you can't see it at all. So <laughs> I'm working at getting a better camera. I think once I get a better camera there's a lot of this will be a lot easier. Alright, so let's get on before I do lose time. We're gonna be an hour with this. All right, so the, the good thing about eating the leaves and the roots are they're at their natural prebiotics. Now, I don't know if, you, if we've discussed it before. Those of you who've been following me for a while, you know I've touched on pre, pre and probiotics and how important they are. Prebiotics are simple carbs, right? Simple carbs and simple fibers that are easily digested by the body. So when you eat the leaves and roots, they break down very easy in the body and they help to make it easier for your body to break them down to probiotics. So the good bacteria in your in your That's so weird. You can see it on the TV, but it's buried through the phone. And I don't have any really any real way to fix it. I, I just don't. The way the lighting's set up. But anyway, I get too distracted on this and then we're just anyway. Alright, so so by by being prebiotic to aid with your digestion. Now they've also been shown to help relieve constipation, and I would believe that would be due to the high the high fiber content. So they have a real high fiber content and maybe that'll get in, it'll help feed your gut flora and it'll get everything kind of moving along <laughs> pretty smoothly like it should. Um, they've used it in treatments for people with a IBS, Crohn's, Crohn's disease, um, leaky, leaky gut, irritable bowel, all that stuff, irritable bowel, IBS, um, leaky gut, those types of in inflammatory illnesses that are in the digestive system. They're all fairly closely related, right? I mean, I, I think they're only separated by, by a couple of, couple of symptoms to be fair. Um, not a doctor, not, you know, not, I just try to simplify things as much as possible. So, um. 
because they because they aid with the digestion and everything else that that'll help with a lot of people who have the IBS or the Crohn's disorders that'll help a lot with that um, acid reflux those types of things they, they will be very beneficial um, they help to reduce inflammation so that's one of the leading causes of chronic illness in the world right it's inflammation it's that big light see it's blurry we can't do anything about it We'll figure something else out. Next week, we'll figure something else out. We'll see what, it, see what we can do. Um, they've been known to help reduce cholesterol. So when you get the bad cholesterol buildup in your in your veins, it'll go through and it'll help scrub that out. Now, that's part of that antioxidant property, the, the body rust part that I call it. It, it. it helps to it helps to like flush it out of your system, right? So you're getting rid of it and it's not staying there clogging and continually blocking up things. It helps to improve your blood flow by obviously by pulling the bad stuff out of your body. And it'll, um, some studies have shown that it even helps improve heart health. So your heart will actually function more optimally, more efficiently with the intake of the different, different types of dandelion supplements. Um, there's so many different ways to eat it. We're going to get into that later. Before I get to that part though, let's see, we're at the 15 minute mark. So we do have some time before we get to that part. Um, does anybody have any questions about this part yet? Just so you guys know, for those of you who are patrons, there is a new freebie that's coming for $3 patrons after, and so for most of you who've been following for a while and you're patrons, um, for the $3 patrons, you guys get, after four months, you get a, uh, a free consultation. Um, for your $2 patrons, after six months, you get a free consultation. And then, of course, for your $1 patrons, after one year of of that you get a free consultation that'll be a consultation with me where we go over a, an entry form and we discuss different various things and i don't make any recommendations but i do offer things that you can research that could potentially help make things better so you know all for three bucks a month you know after four months so most of you like sarah derek you know most of you guys that are that are patrons most of you guys would do one by now but i couldn't think of an actual freebie that i could do that that would be something people would want so that one seems to be about the best. I, I ran it by a bunch of people. I don't I don't know. You'd have to ask them. I, I don't know how Patreon works in regards to yearly. Um I just actually I just posted a bunch of stuff this week on it too. So we're getting so for, for those of you who've been waiting for the book, um, we've gotten a few pages of that out. And you guys are welcome to see it, copy it, whatever. I, pretty soon I'll be getting the the word documents. I, I would I would wildly recommend you wait until the final thing, but if you want to download each page individually, you're certainly welcome to do that. Um, that's, that's you. That's what you're paying for. All right. So, do we have any questions on dandelions before we move on? We only have a few slides, so this isn't going to take forever. And then after after we get to a certain point, we'll I'm going to break in and we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the sunscreen part because I did promise that we're going to discuss the sunscreen part. And what I'm going to do when we're going to discuss the sunscreen part is I went ahead and printed. <laughs> of course, I did. Um, I went ahead and printed it up, and I'm going to read it to you guys. This is the actual the science fair, and then yeah, he they went and did some real other types of science. So you could you know we'll go into that when we get into that part. But if anybody has any questions about this particular part of dandelion. Now would be the time. You get a few seconds here and then I gotta move on because people are not patient when it comes to this kind of stuff. Waiting when they're watching the video later. This is being recorded, so if you want to come back later and watch it, you can do that too. So, but if you do, make sure you watch the whole thing. Even if you just put it on a loop or whatever. All right, so there's no question. We're gonna go to the next page. So there's different ways that we can use dandelion. And, and this is gonna take a few pages because there's so many different ways we can use them, right? There's more than just eating them. There's more than just stuffing them into a capsule, okay? So when it comes to dandelion leaves, the dandelion leaves, they can be eaten raw. You can make them into salads. You can cook them like spinach, any other leafy green. You can dry them and turn them into a tea. Um, you can, I mean, you could freeze them. And, you know, I mean, I, I spin, frozen spinach isn't really very good, but you can do that, right? Now it'll be a little soggy and whatnot. Um, 
try not to. You can even can them if you really want to. But if you're going to can them, make sure you're going to use, you know, like you would can spinach. Get enough of them and you would can it like you would spinach and cook it like your spinach. The thing is, if you're going to use, when you're done with the, the liquid that's in it, use that to make your mashed potatoes or use that to to put it in your soup or, or whatever. Because um, all the nutrients are going to be in that water. Yes, the leaves can be used as capsules too. Um, now, the, the, the capsules aren't going to be very heavy, right? So they're going to be, for like a size zero capsule, they're not going to be more than 150, 200 grams, micro, milligrams per capsule because leafy, the leaves are so, uh, they're so fluffy. I call them, I call it the fluffy or the, the, leaf, the aerial parts are fluffy. They're fluffy enough that you can't really compact them or make them really tight. So if you get dandelion leaves that are super heavy, I, I don't know. <laughs> if the dandelion leaf capsules are super heavy, I, I would wonder why. Because, you know, the leafy part of it, the, the fiber that's part of dandelion isn't super heavy once, once it's dried. So if you have a capsule that's size zero and it weighs three or four hundred milligrams, there's, there's an issue with that. <laughs> I have an issue with that anyway. Um, now, when you do the, the roots, you could do the same thing with the roots. You could dry the roots out and, and grind them up into a powder and make them into capsules too. Now, the roots will be heavy, right? It's a root. It's going to be more dense. So the roots will be, you know, anywhere from three to four, maybe 450 milligrams depending on how how dense the particular uh, powder you get is and because some of the finer powders will be really dense right it'll be easy to pack so and and when you use those capsules you know that's the same you know, and a capsule or two a size zero would be equivalent to um a cup of tea right and which is kind of considered a serving um there's there's no real <laughs> i mean there there is but that that's something that i discuss in my verbal 101 coursework we're getting to that part here pretty soon um, but it, yeah, there's more to it than just make it into a tea or something. So it, yeah, there, there are different ways to use it, but we just don't have time to talk about it tonight because we're just sticking with this part of it. Um, I will probably have to break down and actually do a video on, on just those things, but without having any type of time limit. Um, you can use the flowers themselves. You can use the flowers to make lotions or, or it make a really good lotion. Um, but you can also use them to make wine, teas, or jellies. Now, dandelion jelly is supposed to be really tasty. I've never, I've seen it, right? It's a super yellow jelly. It looks, looks like honey in a jar. Um, the tea, I like the tea. And if you've watched my video on how to eat dandelion, um, I, I drank the dandelion tea. It's, the, the tea isn't bad when it's the flower. I've never had dandelion wine, though. I think that one of these days, maybe next year, when the dandelions pop, We'll make it into a project, a Patreon project, or, you know, just a video project. Had to be careful with TikTok. So, but I could do, a, you know, like a, make a dandelion wine project and we can see how it goes and, and see what everybody thinks of that. The dandelion roots. Now, okay, so there's a few different ways you can use the roots. And, I, and I'm kind of tossed on some things. Now, dandelion roots, you can roast them. So you would take the roots and you cut them up into the small chunks, right? Dry them out and then put them in your oven and roast them. You put them on like 300 degrees. My issue with that is you're going to lose some of the some of the essential compounds, right? It's just, just you're just going to. I mean, because those compounds are they're they're called volatile oils and essential oils. Well, all of these plants have these things in small amounts, right? Which is why you have to distill them out when they when they go to collect that kind of stuff. Well, when you dry them or when you roast them, you're you're losing some of those compounds. And then of course there's some of the other compounds, inulin and and other compounds in the roots that could be damaged by the heat because there are some compounds that are heat sensitive. So you get too hot, too cold. Well, too cold doesn't really matter, but you get too hot and, and that'll, that'll actually burn out some of the properties and it won't be quite as useful. So you can roast them. Um, I've heard of people doing dandelion and chicory, right? Roasting those two and turning them into a, a coffee substitute. I have done, I've drank burdock, dandelion, chicory as a coffee substitute <laughs> and i'll tell you it, for me it is no substitute it's not like my coffee <laughs> right it doesn't taste the same it is not the same thing but you know it, it'd be really good for you now that again some of the downside to that is you know you have roasted out some of the properties um the best way to do that if you're going to do that you take your dandelion and you would chop it up like you normally would to process it and then you just dehydrate it and then when you make your tea a huge majority of the properties are still going to be in the plant. They're going to be stashed in the fiber. They're going to be stashed in the various parts of the um, the cellulite of the of the roots and the flowers. 
and they'll come out once you use your tea. Now, one of the secrets to making tea, you want to keep your temperature, yeah, right around 170, 677 degrees. You don't really want to go any higher than that. The higher you go with your tea, the more of your properties you're going to lose. That still equates to the same thing. So, um, that's something to be pay attention to, right? You, you can use a, um, a meat thermometer or, or food thermometer of some sort to, to get to that, see what you have. But that, that again, would be on on you if, you if you're not looking to get all the properties out you just want a cup of tea i i have told people we'll boil it a little bit right that way you're not necessarily getting all that quote-unquote medicine um but you're still getting the flavor of the tea that you want and, you know, and some people get get really testy with me when i tell them that but you know other people that say oh you need all the properties i don't know i'm just not going to randomly go into my medicine cabinet and start taking stuff so I, it's just kind of the same way if you're drinking herbal teas so it really is the same way there's not even any kind of about that now, dandelion extract, and when I say dandelion extract, that's root extract and leaf extract. You can do, you can do the whole plant, right? You can pick the whole damn thing, dry it all out, and put it all into one thing. Now, if you're going to dry your flowers, be advised, don't try to air dry your flowers, right? We did that once. We, we air dry, we picked a whole, I picked a ton of them, right? Like a, like a, like one of those bread trays, commercial bread trays. I filled it up. It was completely full and I was like, well, I'll just throw it in the barn for a couple days. And I came out two days later, and every single one of those heads had gone to seed. <laughs> so I had an entire bread tray full of dandelion leaves, or dandelion seeds, because every single one of those flowers went to seed. So you got to be careful. 177 is, is good, but 170, that's not bad. I've never heard of dead cats here being used as a substitute. Um, no, I haven't. So when they talk about the extracts, by, by extract, there's a couple of different ways you can do that. You can do dry extracts, right, which are a little bit more complicated, um, and they're not just as easy as, you know, you can do that at your kitchen counter. They take quite a bit of work, and I'm not going into that tonight. But the easiest way to get your, your properties out of dandelion would be to either do an alcohol extraction, a vinegar extraction, or a glycerin extraction. Um, dandelion, I mean, alcohol seems to be about the best medium to pull that, to pull the compounds out. But you don't necessarily have to use alcohol. If you don't like alcohol, you could use a, a you could use a, a apple cider vinegar. But if you're going to use apple cider vinegar, make sure that the culture is still alive. Make sure it's alive with the mother. That way, that bacteria will help break down the dandelion, and, and it'll be more be more like a dandelion cider than it would, you know, just regular dandelion tea or an alcohol extract. <coughs> Excuse me. So. You can also do it by glycerin extract, and, and I'm still working on the video. Um, I know I haven't done it, I said I would, but I've been I've been busy doing other things, trying to get other things done. And that, that'll be coming soon, but I'm going to show you guys how to make a proper glycerin-based tincture. So there'll be no alcohol in a glycerin-based tincture, and it'll show you um, an easier way to do it. The downside to it is that you will lose some of the compounds because you have to heat it up. So, now most times when you're using dandelion extract, they use this for the liver health. <laughs> digestive support in other conditions. By digestive support, you can take the dandelion leaf capsules or even dandelion root capsules if you're trying to boost your your good gut flora because you know that that's as long that's as long as you have good gut flora in your stomach that's good for digestion. Um, that's good for digesting. You can take the I'm not suggesting it, but you can take the the dandelion leaf or the dandelion root and and that would help. You know, in your gut, when it got down there, it would help to feed the good gut flora. So, all in all, that's not, that's fairly easy. I mean, those are all fairly easy ways to use dandelion. Now, before I move on to the next page, we're at 29 minutes. So, I want to leave a little bit of time at the end to do some question and answer stuff if we can. So, we're, we're making pretty good time so far. The next one's going to be a little bit more detailed. There's a lot more stuff to cover, but we're going to, we'll plug through. Is there any questions on this part of it? Dandelion mead, yep, that's good, sure. Now, for those of you who don't know, mead is simply a fermented honey. You take honey instead of yeast and, and grapes or whatever. It, it, it's a honey that, that does the fermentation part. That's your sugar slash, it, it also has the bacteria in it too. So that it helps to ferment. Is there any questions at all about this part of it? If there's not. That means I covered everything fairly well. That's not bad. All right, going on to the next page. Maybe. There we go. 
All right, different ways to use dandelion. There's lots of different ways that we can use dandelion. Again, this is part two. <coughs> um, dandelion root and leaf extracts have been shown to have anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer effects in animal and cell studies. By that, they mean um, by taking the root and the extracts, they actually put it, they applied it directly. You know, they, they, they've applied it both in vivo or in vitro, where they've, they've done it in a, in a test tube. And, you know, they would take cancerous cells with human cells. And what they've discovered when they take those types of they do those kinds of studies, is the dandelion extract is exceptionally good at killing off the, um, oh, that sounds good, Sarah. Sarah's planning on making dandelion jelly. Dandelion root is exceptionally good at killing off the the cancer cells while leaving the health the human cells healthy and undamaged, right? So it creates what's called aptosis, which is a structured cell death in the cancer cell. Once the cancer starts dying from aptosis, it, it's kind of a, it's kind of like a, a domino effect. Once it starts, it just keeps going. And, and it just, yeah, it, it's a thing. So they have shown that both, now they've also done these studies on humanized mice. So humanized mice and Worcester rats, which are also essentially humanized rats. These are all these are all animals that are virtually clones. Um, they have no immune system of their own. And, and they have a lot of human DNA injected throughout the animal in various parts. And when they do these tests, that's that's how they base it, whether or not it's going to be effective for humans, because a lot of the DNA that's being tested against is human DNA. So the latest round of those shots that went out, um, well, not the latest, but one of those rounds, they, they tested on eight mice. That's it. They only used eight mice. They tested it, and then it was approved for human use. So, you know, I mean, if it, if it, works, on, if it works on these, it kind of stands to reason that it would work on the others, too. That's just my opinion. Um, so it's also used sometimes topically, so you'll find it in, in balms or uh, creams, dandelion in, in balms or creams, because they help with skin conditions like eczema, acne, and psoriasis. Part of the reason why with eczema and psoriasis and acne is those are typically caused by bacterial infections or different types of bacteria, or the skin isn't necessarily, um, doesn't necessarily have enough nutrition in that particular part of the body, isn't, it doesn't have the nutrition, and you know, sometimes some of those things are overdiagnosed, I think, that's just me though. But the, the dandelion, they've used it. it, it's an actual, you can go through and look online, do searches for dandelion cream, dandelion lotions, and you will see that they're they are made specifically. They'll have other other ingredients, typically speaking, they'll have things like golden seal, echinacea, um, any of those herbs that are really good antibacterials, olive leaf sometimes they'll put in there. So that, that also helps to alleviate a lot of those symptoms. It doesn't necessarily take care of the root cause, right? But it'll take care of the immediate issue that you're having. Um, Dandelion's a natural diuretic and can be used to treat water retention, bloating, and high blood pressure. Now, it's one of those weird diuretics, and I know I kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but being a weird diuretic, there's, there's a lot of herbs that do this. There's a lot of herbs that are diuretic, but they don't, you know, everybody hears diuretic, but they're not chemical diuretics. When you get like a pharmaceutical grade diuretic, man, those things will, you know, those things will really dehydrate you, right? You start taking that and they, they put a strain on your kidneys. Um, all, all in all, you know, the, the, the pharmaceutical diuretics are pretty rough for you, but herbs like dandelion, and then this would be dandelion root, dandelion tea, if, you, if you're drinking either one of those, if you're taking them as an extract, they are a natural diuretic. So they will get your liver, they will get your, your kidneys going, right? And your kidneys will start, you know, your body will start getting rid of the excess fluid that they have, but it'll only flush out the fluid. Or it'll also grab, it'll grab a lot of the toxins and it'll take the toxins with it, but it doesn't. It, it doesn't leave, it leaves behind the goodies, that's what I call them, you know, it leaves behind all the, you know, you get your, your potassium, your, your magnesium, your iron, all that good stuff, your vitamin Bs, your A, your K, all of it, it stays in, but they, it'll take out the, the toxins that, that's been building up in your body. Um, according to the, the next part of this, the antibody root extract, has potential as a natural sunscreen and may help prevent sun damage and skin cancer. Now, why would I say that? I happened to find this study. It was an accident. It wasn't even a study. I'm going to read the entire thing to you. First, I'm going to show you, and then I will I will try to get this up on my Patreon page. This particular science, this this particular science fair, we'll get it up on my Patreon. So those of you who come over, we'll make it a freebie. It'll be one of the freebies on Patreon. Um, so everybody can see it because I talked about it on the live. It wouldn't be fair for me to, you know, it's just kind of dumb. But this is the Science Fair. It says California Science Fair 2015 Project Summary. The name of it is, there's the, there's the other man's name. It's more than a weed. It's a sunscreen. And here's how it went. 
His objective and goals. This project objective is to find out if dandelion extract had superior UV protection properties when tested against SPF 15, 30, and 50 copper tone sunscreens. Now, you'll hear other people that will argue that. They'll say, well, it doesn't protect against all UV rays. Well, <laughs> it protects... Anyway, we're going to do it. We're going to get there. Methods and materials. Now, he this wasn't very scientifically technical, right? The guy didn't go down. He didn't have a laboratory. He was a 15-year-old kid that was, that was doing this. For his experiment, for this experiment, UV-sensitive paper, SPF 15, 30, and 50 sunscreens, dandelion extract, and Ziploc bags were used. 120 UV-sensitive paper papers that start off blue and turn white according to how much UV radiation impacts the paper were put into individual Ziploc bags. 0.6 ounces of the dandelion extract was smeared evenly on 30 papers and the same was done with all the other sunscreens. These papers were then simultaneously taken out and exposed to the sun for 15 minutes and then soaked in water to stop the chemical reaction. Each paper was then marked a specific number, 0 to 5, 0 being best, to mark the sunscreen's efficiency. Each sunscreen was then given an average from the sun scale, once again, zero being the best. All right, so here it comes. Results. SPF 50 had an average of 1.23 protection. SPF 30 had 1.10, and SPF 50 had 0 0.93. <laughs> Whereas the dandelion extract had an average of 0.5, which is almost twice as good as what copper tone SPF 50 was. The hypothesis was that dandelion extract would be as effective as SPF 30 sunscreen, but the results showed that the extract was even more effective than SPF 50 sunscreen. Conclusions, discussions, the tested dandelion extract proved to provide better protection against the sun's UV rays than the commercial copper tone products having SPF 15, 30, and 50. That was his conclusion for that particular study. That's pretty amazing, right? And now, here's where the Patreon comes in, and it's, and it's going to sound silly, but that's one of my free recipes. I'm pretty sure that's one of my free recipes over on Patreon. Yeah, it is. Um, how to make a dandelion lotion, and it tells you exactly how to make dandelion lotion from start to finish. All the ingredients, everything you need. It's really simple, um, and it's, it's one of my free free recipes that are over there. It's, it's in the free section of Patreon. And if those of you are wondering, you want to go see it or want to go get the free recipe, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And... It, 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 this would be a great idea to make for yourself, make for your kids. There's no chemicals in it. One of the things that they've discovered, and I'll probably discuss this or do a video about it. One of the things they've discovered about commercial sunscreens is that when the UV rays come flying in at nearly the speed of light, they hit this zinc or, or whatever ha materials they happen to use to block the sun, and it acts like a pool ball, right? If you play billiards, you know. You ever broken a pool when you, when you break? That's pretty much the same thing that the UV rays do when they hit the sunscreen. They've discovered this, and they found that, that instead of just a single UV ray going through your body, which would be a free radical or creating free radicals, you have a UV ray that hits your sunscreen, and now instead of one, you've got eight or seven or 12 um, free radicals that are flying through your body at random directions, causing all sorts of havoc. So, and this, you can go look that up. That, that's, uh, go look it up about sunscreen being not so protective. And, and now you know that there's, a, there's an alternative way here that you can go about finding your, uh, a way to protect your, you and your family from, uh, from UV rays. Now, the other thing about that is, after, after that was done, a bunch of other scientists went and they, they kind of did a follow-up study in regards to what this young man had found. And they discovered it was way more than that. Not only does dandelion does not only does dandelion protect, he just did dandelion root. They did the whole thing, right? So they did root, the leaf, the flower, and they found that the, the different parts of the plant protected at different stages of the burn when it came to to how it was being you know used. And and they also found that not only that, but the the leaf and the flower would help would would speed the healing process of cells um, as they were being exposed. So they're getting burnt and they're healing kind of at the same time. Now, granted, if you're, you know, if the sun is way really super hot, it, it's going to, eventually, it's going to win. But at least this way, you have a means to protect yourself. Now, what they've also discovered about dandelion is it doesn't, it doesn't act like sunscreen in the way that if, if a UV ray hits it, it nearly needs to be lighted. It's, for, for whatever reason, and I don't know if they've discovered why, dandelion and sunflower will do this too, but dandelion will absorb the radiation. It just kind of absorbs it. Right? It doesn't get knocked through the body. It doesn't get to go anywhere. It, it like catches. 
and he doesn't get he doesn't get to go and cause more damage. So that's pretty cool. I mean, that, that's a pretty neat, pretty neat little uh, tidbit of knowledge that most people don't know about dandelion. How long is the shelf life of the sunscreen? No, I don't know. You could it probably last. It would depend on the oils you use. If you use the oils that I give in the in the um, if you give the oils that I use in the the recipe, it it'll be good for at least a year. Um, if you use your own oils, you know, if you use things like vegetable oil, canola oil, uh, it's going to be rough. They, they won't be very good. So, so there, there's what we know about dandelion. Now, now that we've covered all of that, does anybody have any questions about this part of it? All right, no questions. Awesome. <coughs> Excuse me so much. So bad. All right, going on to the next page. Here's some other different ways. Dandelion leaves can be used in poultices or com compresses to soothe insect bites, rashes, or other skin irritations. Now, I know that you've heard me talk about plantain. Plantain for pain. Those of you who've been following me for a long time, you've probably heard that ad nauseum. Like, just shut up about the plantain already. Plantain for pain. You can take plantain, you pick it up, chew it up, put it on a burn, cut, whatever, and it'll help alleviate the pain. Well, dandelion has lacticarium. Lacticarium, as we've discussed earlier in this in this particular show, um, maybe I didn't. No, I did not. Okay, so lacticarium is the white sap that leaks out, and it binds naturally with the opioid receptors in your brain, and it helps to cause a, um, a pain-relieving effect, right? So it'll help to, to, to soothe the pain receptors so that way that the pain that you're having isn't as, isn't as severe. Now, is it as strong as morphine or no, of course not. <laughs> I mean, because I mean, it hasn't been refined like that. But it does have a lot of those same properties. And now, from what I understand, um, lacticarium is opioid-like. I mean, it doesn't have the, doesn't have the uh, addictive nature that, that opioid, opioids have. So you could you could technically you could harvest just the lacticarium if that's what you're looking for. I am not a huge fan of doing it that way, but you know you could, and of course you know by doing that you'd have to score the plant and let it bleed, let it bleed out, and then you know scrape it and whatever to to get your lacticarium. Um, but it would be very time consuming and tedious, and you know so I mean, if you want to, yeah, and I'd, I'd be willing to bet you could probably get online and find dealers that deal with just lacticarium. But I mean I I don't know. <laughs> I, I've never been a huge fan of just the single compounds of herbs, but that's just me. I, I'm kind of weird like that. Um, for those of you who have issues with hair, uh, it's a common ingredient in natural hair care products due to its ability to stimulate hair growth and improve scalp health. The reason why is because it's loaded with phytochemicals. It has flavonol, flavonoids and you know, other phytochemical plant compounds that help to stimulate growth, right? They have a lot of... Uh, the nutrients and stuff that you would need to help those things move smoothly. You can make a tea out of them, and then you know I, I've heard of I've heard of people using rosemary, but you can make a tea out of them, and you know use the tea to um, clean. So you can clean your, you know, use it as a put it in a spray bottle and then make a tea, put it in a spray bottle and use it because it's a disinfectant. You know, you can use it mix it with like maybe some oregano and some rosemary. And it can be used in order to, you know, I mean, just clean up around without having to use any of the toxic chemicals. Some people don't like using Lysol. Some people don't like necessarily using some of those cleaning products that are made just from chemicals. So, um, I don't know about deodorizer. I don't know how well it would work for that. But, I mean, there, there are, if you look online, there's recipes that you can find on how to make your own, your own cleaning agents out of all natural products. So, and, and for the most part, they work really well. Now, for myself, um, if you're going to add, if you want something that's a natural disinfectant, I would add herbs like copal, copal resin, which is a, it's a resin based from a tree, or dragon's blood. Um, get the dragon's blood resin resin, and then break it down into a tea, because those are, well, maybe not the dragon's blood. You wouldn't want to spray dragon's blood, it stains. <laughs> so you could use frankincense or myrrh, frankincense or myrrh or copal. You could use those and, and make a tea out of those with the others, and, and they're all shown to be antimicrobial. And it would be much better, a much better cleaner than anything you would get at the store. And healthier too, right? It's going to help. You know, it's going to help a lot of things with you know, because some people they, they have the, the chemical allergies or they, you know they're very sensitive, and you spray that stuff, it gets into their sinuses or it gets into their lungs, and then they have a really hard time. So this is just another way, 
and then for you to find different ways to this is this is us thinking outside the box and different ways to use plants that most people wouldn't think my recipe for sunscreen is, is on my patreon page and the patreon page is the herb guy and it'll be one of the freebies so when you get there there'll be some banners at the top and when it says free click on the free there's like 30 31 i don't know there's there's quite a few things on there and you'll have to kind of scroll down a bit you'll find it but that's on there there's a bunch of free things like you know um, flea terminator dog biscuits and, and sorts of just cool stuff and a lot of articles and things um now the other thing you can do with your dandelions if you don't want to eat them you don't want to put them in your food you don't want to use them as medicine you don't want to you don't want to mess around with any of that stuff, right? You just, you know, it's just a weed. Put in your compost, right? It can actually be one of the best composts you can use. It's going to have the big three, the magnesium, phosphorus, and whatever, nitrogen, that you need for your soil to be, to be super healthy. Um, but it'll also break down really well and add extra nutrients, which as your other plants are growing, they will utilize. So it'll help to boost your, your soil if you're not really wanting to try to, try to use it as a, as a medicine or use it as a food source. Now, when it comes to being sprayed, if your yard's been sprayed, wait a few years, two years at least, before you start harvesting. Unless you had, you know, unless you're in a part of the yard that wasn't sprayed. Um, I'm not a huge proponent of worrying about a lot of that particular stuff because realistically speaking, if you think about it, it's in the air. Right? You see the planes as they go by, the, the, the crops and all that other stuff. So we know that it's still in the air and, and the air moves, you know. If, if you if you think about it and you watch a if you watch a crop duster spray if you go go down my YouTube channel here and see when I talked about the glyphosate I was a half a mile away from that guy and he was spraying it and I could still taste it in the air you know and that was half a mile away so you know that's the even with your organic crops look it's in the air you know and plants are nothing but big giant filters anyway so they're gonna grab some of that stuff anyway is there a natural furniture polish out there well I mean I guess it would depend on what you're trying to furniture polish if you're trying to polish something beeswax would be about your best best way to do that but see the, the thing about using beeswax is you get it on there and then you gotta just you gotta you gotta go really fast right you gotta buff and polish really hard but beeswax is, a, is great for for that um and i believe that there are some other natural stains that you can use black walnut seems to be used quite often some of the redder stuff um flowers uh let's see chicory is used because it makes a really nice blue bluish purple dye it depends on depends on your your medium is and how you, if you use like vinegar it'll be a little bit more purplish um let's see is there for... all right so we have 13 minutes now would be the time to do any type of question and answers q a and but let's keep it dandelion related so that way if i if i missed anything in regards to that or if there's a point you'd like clarified Let's try to discuss that so we can keep this thing specifically dandelion related. Um, I'm going to try to see if I can find a better camera. <laughs> Get us a better camera. We'll have better better videos. So, I mean, my phone can only do so much on YouTube, I'm telling you. But I'm, I'm sure that there's some some things. Yeah, I mean, if, yeah, if you can make sure, make sure that, okay, so, so Sarah says, first Teresa says, is there a natural furniture polish out there and Sarah says Teresa maybe have lemon oil in addition to beeswax well if you can make them emulsified and turn it into like a an oily cream you could do that right use the beeswax with the lemon oil so maybe do a a lemon oil base and then if you're following following along um and you do any of my any of my lotion videos go back and look to my lotion videos and that would be yeah you could probably turn that but what you'd want to do is you'd want to add a little bit more beeswax to it make it more creamy right so i think for a batch of for a batch of lotion it's like 12 or 13 grams of beeswax so if you do the same batch and you add maybe an ounce ounce and a half of beeswax it'll be a bit creamier and then when you go to polish it out it'll it'll polish better ever thought about zoom Well, I got to stay consistent because inevitably there's going to be more than 11 people here. You know, I mean, most of my TikTok people don't even realize I'm here. They don't realize that I've, I've been on Um, I mean, and that's the only problem with Zoom. And, you know, because eventually, I mean, I'm getting enough of a following here. I have like 1,700 people. So I'm, I'm going to be getting a different type of setup. I'm going to be getting, we'll be doing this at a different time. 
so there'll be more people. Uh, eventually, I'd like to do this very consistently. And then, of course, the more we do it consistently, the more people are going to show up, especially if I can keep the content at least marginally entertaining. So, let's see. Jacob says, IBS Crohn's, should we go with a tincture? Okay, so that would depend on how, how advanced your IBS or Crohn's is. Now, if you're trying to rebuild your gut flora, um, I'm not recommending anything, but if it were myself, and I were doing it for myself, I would probably most likely do the leaves or the root as either capsule supplements or eat them raw, and then be sure that I was um, doing some aloe vera with them, right? Aloe vera is, has some natural enzymes in it that are really good for your digestion, and they would help to break down some of the the dandelion before it gets to your gut, right? So it's already halfway there to being broken down, and then it gets into your gut, and it makes the good gut flora have to work even less in order to be able to process that dandelion. Um, the extract, it's okay, right? It'll help a little, but I, I would just, it, something tells me you'd be better off taking that, because you need that fiber, you're going to need that stuff inside your body. That's my that's my thought on it. Don't get me wrong, the tincture would certainly help though. I, I mean, I mean, in theory, <laughs> gotta be careful what I say. I wouldn't want anybody to think that I'm giving you any type of medical advice because I don't do that. I just talk about science. Now, I can't get my my screen to show me what you see, or to show. I I had it set up like that for whatever reason. It doesn't do that again now. I don't know why. But um. I was going to be able. I was going to take my my laptop and show you guys some of some of the other things that we found. Now, in regards to this science fair, I think what I'll do the next time I break something like this down in regards to this, and this will be over on my my Patreon. I'll get it over there tonight. Um, if I can find the link to that other one to the other study, I'll I'll go ahead and put that in there too, so you guys can check it out. I'll probably make it into put the PowerPoint on there too, but it's only like three pages, four pages. I don't even know that it's worth putting on there. I mean, if you guys would want to see it, I can do that. Um, other than that, there really doesn't seem any point, to be any point to move it, to, to, to put that up there. So we will try to, we'll get this on there, we'll get the other one on there, so that way you can see the real science behind it. And then it'll give you a better reason to want to make the dandelion sunscreen, because you make the dandelion sunscreen. Um, make a double batch on it, and that would, that would be good for your whole family for almost an entire season. Now, it, now you're going you're gonna to have two different options on there. It's going to give you the option to use emu oil, or it's going to give you the option to use... Well, no, it's going to give you the option to use emu oil. I'm going to personally give you the option, and maybe I'll go back through and change that at some point. Um, you can use castor oil in lieu of emu oil if, if you're against having animals or, or anything like that. Um, you can use castor oil. Castor oil does absorb okay. Aloe so certainly helps it. Um, by okay, I mean castor oil does get in really deep, it, it does well, but it doesn't always carry the compounds with it. So, whereas emu oil is known to carry the compounds that it, that it has with it, castor oil doesn't always do that. Now, castor oil in and of itself is so amazing. Um, castor oil, cold packs, and all that stuff have shown to be really, really beneficial. But I'm kind of a big fan of infusing the oils with um, herbs, so that way it'll take the herbs in with it too. So I'll use it with like comfrey and bone set in order to like heal wounds deeper on the inside versus just healing from the outside. And you know, cause when you heal it from the outside in, you know, that's when you tend to have complications and problems. Thanks for the science. You're welcome. Science before entertainment. Right. I like to do that. I, you're right. That's a good, that's a good call. Science and science and education first. Um, you know, I have to be kind of entertaining too, because people have such a such a such a low attention span <laughs> that if you don't if you don't have the entertainment in there, or if you don't have the right personality for this kind of stuff, um, you're not going to go far. So I, I tend to be somewhat of a spark alec, and my sarcasm and disdain for big pharma tends to bleed out occasionally. For those of you who've been watching me for a while, you know that I tend to not be a huge fan of, of big pharma or <laughs> how they do anything. So but I had to be careful because, you know, they're the biggest advertisers on just about every one of these social media sites. So talking down about Big Pharma is very counterintuitive if I'm trying to get my message out there. And um, they, they can be they can be a bit of a pain. Never be able to make the wrong person mad. I, I know you guys do. You guys are all pretty freaking awesome. 
I, I, have, I have some of the best followers on the internet. Every time I go live, I, I find it, um, I like on TikTok anyway. Uh, when I was going live on TikTok, I was doing better than 99% of the other people that did the same kind of stuff I do. You know? So that's kind of cool. That, that's pretty big. <laughs> that's pretty big. There's a lot of herbalists over there. And um, I've been getting a lot more followers. I just did another video today in regards to the backyard. I don't know if any of you guys saw that. I'll post it here on, I think I might have posted it on YouTube too. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But I will, um, yeah, I do appreciate the likes, but I will try to get it up here on YouTube fairly quickly. I might have to transfer it from my phone to my computer so I can get it on there, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Looks like we made it to the 56 minute mark. Nobody seemed to have any other big questions. We got three and a half minutes, so if anybody's got a question, now would be the time to shoot. Yeah, I'm glad you made it too, Teresa. I don't like those filters from corporations either. Yeah, they're a bit. Oh, Cindy, I still have your lotion or your salve. I haven't sent yet. It's in that tin. It's just sitting there <laughs> waiting to send to Cindy. I said, your kit's on its way. Um, but I still have your salve, so I'll get it to you quickly so you don't have to hurry up and make the salve. <laughs> You guys are the ones that give to me. Jeez, are you kidding? You guys share my stuff. You watch my stuff. It, it makes it it makes it worth doing. You know, I got I got a pretty pretty loyal following, so that's what makes you guys which makes you guys so amazing. Um, I don't know that we're going to be doing the lotion video next week though, so I'll have to figure something else. I'm not sure, sir. I, if you use the emu oil in it, uh, it, it should last quite a while. You know, but don't apply it. If you if you do apply it, you reapply it outside. Make sure that you you go inside, apply it, wait till it soaks in, and then go back outside. Because if you do it when it's still wet, um, you run the risk of it being wet, acting like a magnifying glass, and then you fry yourself underneath your sunscreen that you just made. So don't do that. Make sure that your skin is dry when you put it on. If you use if you don't use emu oil or castor oil, you do run the risk of it not absorbing very well into your skin too. So just be advised, you know, put the emu oil in there or the castor oil in there. So that way you're sure that it soaks into the layers of your skin to help with that protection. So that's cool. I, I look forward to it too. It was a little rushed today. I almost didn't make it, but right. Apply ahead of time. And then when you go in, take your rest or whatever, then you can go back out and do it again. That, that, because I, I put it on once because we were in the, like 110 degrees sun all day. I put it on once and um, everything was still wet and I got ultra burnt because I, I didn't let it dry and soak in. So it helped to, to heal it later, but I mean, I was sun sick for days. It was awful. But again, you know, I mean, I was underneath 110 degree sunlight next to a lake fishing all day with no real protection on me. So yeah, that was rough. You can use hemp or grapeseed, yeah. sunflower oil. Use quality, high quality sunflower oil. Don't use the cheap stuff. But sunflower oil is also known to absorb radiation, or sunflowers are anyway. So, we are really close to the one hour mark. Please join me again next week. It's Sunday nights at 7 o'clock here on YouTube. We will discuss something next week. We already know what the topic is going to be. Next week is going to be the May apple and how it helps with radiation protection. And also how it is currently being used as a prescription drug. So, we'll talk about the drug, what it's used for, and other types of benefits that you may not know about the May apple. I do appreciate everybody stopping by tonight. Don't forget to visit my Patreon page. If you have any other questions, feel free to contact me.